Hello legends anywhere anytime this is Zach of SomeDudePlays.com and I welcome you all to part 163 of Fire Emblem Three Houses Blue Lions. So we do have quite a few more uh, support conversations to get through. So let's start with Catherine get through all of hers except for Dimitri who's really holding up everything. So let's start with Alois. You know, Catherine, you really saved my hide. If not for you, I would have bought that phony coin. So I just wanted to say, money thanks. Really, I quite begin to express my gratitude. Okay, that was horrible. You should feel really bad about it, Alois. There's no need to thank me, Alois. It was nothing. But I am a little worried about you. You just immediately believed what he was saying. You're way too trusting. I wish you'd be a little more skeptical about people, that's all. Hmm. Yes, you make a good point. I'll try to be more cautious from now on. Um, excuse me, sir. I'm terribly sorry to interrupt. Good day, ma'am. Do you need something? I'm afraid so. You see, I'm a humble traveler, and a pickpocket stole all my money. I don't have enough to get home, and I have nowhere to sleep tonight. Please, sir, spare a little money to help me. Okay, there's two ways you can go about this, Alois. Give her some money, ask her to show her where the pickpocket stole the money so you can track him down, or just offer her a place to spend the night. Now, what are you going to choose? Are you going to be naive and just give her the money? But this one might be legit. Oh, I'm so sorry about your troubles. I don't have much on me, but here. Alois, no, not so fast. You there, Traveler. Tell me your name. I'd like to take an official statement from you so that we can investigate this thing. <laughs> ah, nice. Good going, Catherine. Once we ascertain exactly what happened, then we will lend you some money. How does that sound? And she's gone. What? You don't mean she was trying to... <laughs> yes, she was. It's a common trick for cheats to pull. They pluck at your heartstrings so that you'll give them your money. You just said you'd be more careful, too. You really are an easy mark, Alois. Catherine must have pulled that stuff in the past. Oh, how embarrassing. She knows all the tricks. Why are you so quick to trust people? I've always believed that to earn others' trust, you have to be trusting. You're taking that philosophy a bit too far. She has a point. Now, Gilbert. Why'd you summon me so formally? Not going to confess your love, I hope. Catherine, he's married. I have something I must ask you. That's a bit ominous. What is it? Will you be going home? Ah, uh, that's what this is about. There must be those who, even now, wait for you. Believe in you. Once again, more of Catherine's backstory and probably a bit of Gilbert's as well. Now that Lord Lonato is dead, I can think of no one who would stop you from returning. I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss my friends and family back in Fargus. But no, I'm not going back. The person I used to be no longer exists. The life of a noble tied down by rules and etiquette? No thanks. Not for me. My future is here, with the Knights of Saros, as Thunder Catherine. I understand. In fact, that is the answer I expected from you. So why did you ask? Five years ago, you chose to leave the Knights. I'm guessing you don't regret that choice. I do not. But you have caused me to realize something about myself. Yay, let's hear what it is. The sight of you swinging your sword to fulfill your duty your birthplace left behind. It reminded me of my life before, of the day I swore my vows and was made knight to my king. <laughs> you think I'm just fulfilling my duty, huh? I'm not as virtuous as you make me out to be. I fight because I want to. That's it. We are the same in that respect. On the day my liege bestowed upon me my sword, I knew protecting this man Fighting battles in his name would be an irreplaceable joy. King, 
country, family, friends, beliefs. My list of what I longed to keep safe grew. And then you screwed up. Hence my realization. I did not become a knight so I could pray. I did so to fight. It seems we've come to an agreement then. So what are we doing standing around here chatting? Time for Good a point. spar. We should end the idle talk. Will you spar with me, Catherine? I believe it is much too early for me to lay down my lance forever. Or your hammer or now your we're axe. Talking. Oh, also, Gilbert. You look much better now that you have some fire in your eyes. <laughs> I am honored you think so. Yeah, so that's the one really nice thing about these uh, supports. They really show the different in character growths. Hey, Setef. I've been meaning to ask you. What is your relationship with Lady Rhea? That is certainly an abrupt question. You're much closer to her than anyone else in the entire church. Certainly you're a good, upstanding person, but I can't help but feel there's something more to it. Supporting the Archbishop is my sole professional interest. Personally, I consider her to be something akin to a Their companion. family. A companion? Yes, as in a traveling companion. Friends who walk the same path toward the same destination. Hmm. Companion, huh? A companion. I guess that does sound about right, now that you say it. Though, I'll confess to being quite jealous. Not many people can call themselves companions of Lady Rhea. I do not know how she feels about it. Oh, come on. You must trust that she feels the same about you. There is no need for that sort of trust. My duties are the same, regardless of her yep. perspective. I consider you to be a companion also. A companion in fighting for the Archbishop? <laughs> Certainly. Our goals are firmly aligned when it comes to that, are they not? You're right, they are. I suppose you and I could be considered companions in that sense. <laughs> I am pleased to hear my sentiment reciprocated. I rely on you a great deal, after all. More than most. Whoa there, what's all this now? Flattery won't win you any prizes with me, Sedef. I do not flatter. I merely want you to understand why it matters to me that you be more cautious in battle. <laughs> good, uh, good little trick there. <laughs> Make it, letting her know that the, there's people around her that care about her, so come back alive and as uninjured as possible. As your companion, it is my wish for you to be safe. Oh good, we're back in familiar territory. With you admonishing me. Don't worry, I'll be careful. I'll always try to live up to your expectations. So don't expect too much or you'll wear me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Seteth is Seteth is treating Catherine like a little sister who keeps getting into trouble. <laughs> More training. Catherine's working hard. I guess even the strongest fighters can't neglect their training. At it again? Or is she still at it? Oh, a spectator. If you want to ogle, you ought to be a little less conspicuous. Sorry, I didn't mean anything by it. I was just passing by. I couldn't help but wonder, though, have you been training all this time? Yes, I'm simulating prolonged combat. Fighting for a long time requires a whole different set of skills. It also teaches you how to fight and survive when you're exhausted. And let's put it this way, battles can go on for ages where even 10 seconds feel like it feels like forever. If you can't handle it in training, you'll certainly be doomed against the real thing. I can't even imagine having what it takes to keep that up for so long. And endurance and stamina leads to people surviving a lot as long as you have the skill to back it up. You've been in your share of battles. I'm sure you have some sense of what it takes. A brutal, protracted clash in open marshland, neither side retreating. Barely being able to move because your boots are getting stuck in the swamp, muddy ground. In that situation, what will you do? Your survival depends on decisions you make in the moment. I see why you're so successful. Most importantly, don't give up. Don't start thinking about how you might lose or might die. Focus on surviving, on winning. You're right. 
I've been narrow-minded. I decided, since I don't have a crest and can't use relics, that I'm powerless against someone like you. And that is that has no meaning on how you can beat someone. They just have a little bit of advantage that you just need to fight smarter to beat. But that's wrong. I'm not helpless. Not as long as I'm breathing and on my feet. So, the first thing I'm going to do is learn how to beat you. When you're unarmed, at least. <laughs> Still going to get your ass kicked quite a bit. That's the spirit, Leone. Though I'm not planning on losing either, you know. Good. I hope you're ready. Because I'm going to train even harder than you. You remind me of myself when I was young. I would become so angry at my own weakness. I feel strangely nostalgic seeing that same anger in you. But at least he has uh, huh? the right person to, that girl go? to uh, teach her. Yeah, wants her nice and fresh for training. Hey, Kaspar. You look more troubled than usual. Yeah. I've been thinking a lot about the last time we talked. I really admire your strength, and I want to be like you on the battlefield. But I don't agree with your idea of justice. If that's the case, is it bad for me to look up to you? I'm not sure how to feel anymore. You can still look up to the person even if there's things that you don't agree with. You just need to follow your own path with those things. I can't answer that. You'll need to find the answer on your own. I can offer one piece of advice, however. Sure, anything will help. When I told you I would cut down children with no hesitation, you looked disgusted. I take it that's the part you're struggling to accept? Oh, definitely. Pretty much. I don't think I'd be able to do it, even if that meant disobeying orders. Well, what if the children had their own weapons? What if they were trying to kill you? Then if you have the chance, you uh, get, you make sure they lose their hands on their weapons and catch them as safely as possible. Well, maybe if it was in self-defense, but even that. What if the children were killing each other? Let's say their families had been slaughtered and they sought revenge. How would you stop the killing? Who would you strike down? I don't know. I'd have to see what's going on for myself, but even then, I... Yeah, uh, Catherine has given him really good scenarios to think about because it's always better to think of a scenario so you have a plan beforehand that you can change on the fly than go in with none. When you witness these horrors in person, it's no easier to decide. In fact, the decision is harder. Choosing to end or spare a life whether to save someone or abandon them. These choices yep. are always difficult. Having to choose between life and death. You have a strong sense of justice. You have clearly defined ideals. But that's not an asset on the battlefield. Ideals slow you down. They cause inner conflict. Making decisions in the spur of the moment, you can't hope to be perfectly fair and just. And that's the thing, on the battlefield, that one moment of hesitation, can cause you to lose your life. That's why I choose to fight for Lady Rhea's justice. The justice of the Church of Saros. But what about when Lady Rhea's ideals don't really line up with yours? Then what? Not possible. Lady Rhea's ideals are my ideals. Really? Do you really know, uh, know that? There's no conflict between them because that's what I've decided. Do you see? Ah, and then that makes sense. So what other ideals Rhea has, Catherine is just going to pair it. I don't get it. You can't possibly agree on everything. I have faltered in the past. That's what I'm talking about. How can you blindly trust some other person's sense of justice? Not a person. The goddess. I cared about someone, and they were branded a criminal. That's when I started down this path. I didn't know whether to turn a blind eye or mete out punishment. What did you do? I couldn't decide, so I looked to the Goddess for guidance. Since then, I have devoted myself completely to the Goddess. I surrender myself wholly to her will. So think carefully, Kaspar. To what will you devote your sword and your heart? Yeah, this is really going to help him grow. All good questions with good answers. Catherine. About Thunderbrand. 
And Linhart and his crest research once again. I said my position would not change. Go home. You're not getting your hands on Thunderbrand. I was not asking to, so stop being so overprotective. I have a different request today. Oh, so you're nagging about something else. Just so you know, constant badgering isn't a very attractive quality. I would appreciate it if you would use Thunderbrand somewhere that I might observe it in action. Since you have denied me the simplest path to my enlightenment, I decided instead that I should closely observe the relic in use. Yep. Linhart, the hero's relics aren't showpieces. I only use Thunderbrand when I need its power. I won't waggle it around for your entertainment. It's not entertainment. He's trying to learn about the weapons, what they're made, what they do. And then maybe that'll help you use it better. You know, even though it's compatible with my crest, it still takes its toll on me. Every time I use it, it wears away at my soul. Not that you'd understand. Of course I don't understand. I've never used it. <laughs> yep. Watch your tone. Remember who you're talking to. Why are you so unwilling to let me study Thunderbrand in any manner? I wish to be a true Crest Scholar. Learning all there is to know about the hero's relics is my duty. I could learn a great deal by using a relic myself, even if that did mean endangering my life, yet you deny me the opportunity. And there's a good reason, especially if you're talking like that. Scholars who will not endanger their lives in pursuit of knowledge are worthless. Scholars should be willing to lose their lives? In a word, yes which makes it all the more frustrating that you refuse my attempts at study. But I can't seem to convince you, so just forget all about it. Your bullheadedness wins the day, Catherine. Wow, she actually got Linhart to show passion instead of just being so dead to the world. I'll go ask someone else. If only I could use the sword of the creator. Without a crest stone, it won't respond. I wonder how it is that the professor can use it. The only explanation that makes any sense is... Could... Could it be? Hmm. He wants so badly to study crests, he'd risk his own life. That's impressive. I underestimated your tenacity, Linhart. But I have to protect you from yourself. And I agree there. <laughs> Yeah, so Catherine's taken quite a long time for all of these. All right then, enough sparring for today? <sighs> yes, that should suffice. I must say, you've gotten good at seeing through my tricks. I can't mislead you so easily anymore. I've made it my goal to read your aim and not give away anything through my body language. And the other thing, it's good training for when she fights other people. But in hand-to-hand -hand combat, your form needs work. On the battlefield, even if you lose your weapon, you can't ever stop fighting. Oh, yeah. Sink your teeth into their throats. Kick them where it hurts. Do whatever it takes to survive. Yep, because once you're in the mall, honor means nothing. You do what you do to survive. Have you ever needed to employ such methods? Not on the battlefield. I've never been in such a dire situation that I needed to. But at the tavern, loads of times. With a well-aimed boot, I've brought <laughs> many a man to his knees. <laughs> <laughs> My point is, you can't hesitate to use dirty tactics. You have to grit your teeth and fight back. War isn't as pretty as it's made out to be in all those poems and songs. Sometimes, even as a knight, you have to do things that you might think are beneath yep. you. Yep. <laughs> you might even have to let innocent bystanders die. Even though you need to try your best to stop that from happening. Are you prepared for that, Ingrid? Do you really want to be a knight? knowing what it entails i'm prepared to do whatever is requested of me come what may i will be a knight who loyally serves my king just as you loyally serve lady Rhea. you've got me wrong i'm loyal to the archbishop but only up to a point i'd do anything in the world for lady Rhea, except die if she asked me to die for her i wouldn't Finally, Catherine mentions something about where she draws the line. Does that sound like a contradiction? Very well. That's just who I am. You're right. It does sound like a contradiction. With all due respect, that isn't very knightly of you. I'm not sure I fully understand. You will someday. Maybe not for a while, but you will. In the meantime, just don't die. 
Okay. I'll try my best. It's like one of the first rules. Don't die. <sighs> wow, you've gotten much better. You're not doubting yourself anymore. It's like your state of mind is completely different. What changed? Can I tell you honestly? Please do. Maybe this is a chance to resolve our dispute and move on. This is gonna be good. As a knight, an ally, and even as a person, I know I can trust you. But somewhere in my heart, there's a part of me that can't forgive what you did. Of course. Your brother's blood is on my hands. It wouldn't be easy for anyone in your position to feel forgiving. If someone said it was easy, I would probably give him a smack in the face. You may never be able to forgive me, no matter how hard you try. But at least he, he can work together with you. That is a big change. I'm prepared to accept that. It's my duty. I admire your spirit, Catherine. Honestly, I do. I hope the part of me that's holding this grudge will get smaller with time. Maybe someday, it'll vanish. Exactly, when you take out the true culprits. That's rather poetic. M maybe, but... Uh... I'm being serious. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to make light of it. <laughs> no, it, it's all right. We should have talked like this much sooner. I feel like I can finally stop dwelling on the past and start looking forward to the future. I think meeting you has been good for me, too. Different people have different morals. They won't always agree on what's right and what's wrong. And that's a big truth. Maybe that's obvious but it's something I think about when I'm talking to you. Can I ask something of you? I'd like to get to know you better, Catherine, as a person and as my friend. And that'll help him get rid of the grudge. Sure, but I won't do all the talking. It'll be dull if you don't tell me about yourself too. Me? <laughs> uh, it, it won't be very interesting for you, but okay. Okay, let's chat over a nice tasty meal, my treat. Christoph, Lenato, watch over me, please. Hurry up or I'll eat all the food. <laughs> Coming. Yeah, this is what happens when you put, put off all the training for sports and do it all at once. Hmm. Yeah, I just need to get him and Ingrid. Why am I so unlucky with women lately? Oh, Sylvain, what's that face for? Have you been dumped again? <laughs> Isn't there an unwritten rule you shouldn't ask someone that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you didn't mind being dumped. <laughs> so your love life can get you down sometimes after all. Who knew? I'm sad every time I break up with someone. It's just... I usually try to be the one doing the breaking up. Well, someone just gave you a taste of your own medicine. I've never had a hard time with girls. Ever. Not until recently. But now when I think about it, I wonder what any of them even liked about me. Well, Sylvain, word gets around. It's not as if any of them knew much about me. I don't get it. Isn't that what a relationship is for? Learning about someone else? You can't know it all right at the start. I asked you before if you would have invited me out if I was a peasant. You did ask me that, yes. That was wrong of me to say. I've just, it's not an excuse, but I'm always so suspicious. I'm a nobleman with a crest. The marriage proposals don't stop coming. Everybody wants me. But not you. Except they don't actually want me at all. They want my bloodline, within my family and without. It's always the same story. Sometimes I think that if I didn't have a crest, no one would look at me twice. I see. <laughs> and you're probably not wrong. Well, he's seen what happened with his older brother. Honestly, I've had those same sort of thoughts myself. Oh? What sort of thoughts might those be? I sang, people cheered and applauded, and when I walked off stage, I'd find the same thing every night. A mountain of presents and marriage proposals. <laughs> but none of those people knew me. 
All they knew was the singer they saw on the stage. All they wanted was my looks and my voice. None of them even tried to get to know the real me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've heard this somewhere. You've spoken about yourself, Savane. We may come from different places, but we're much the same, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I suppose we are. Look, Dorothea, I've realized something. Even if you were an old grandma, I'd still flirt with you. And I'd absolutely win you over. <laughs> Though, I'd much rather win you over now. And be with you until you become an old grandma. That might be the most legitimately romantic thing you've ever said, Sylvain. And I can't say I disagree. I'd rather you win me over now, too. So that I can stay by your side until you're an old grandpa. Well, before any of that, will you go to dinner with me? I'd be happy to. Now that was a nice end. That was just a beautiful end to that one. Yeah, so it's surprising. Sylvain, as long as you have a female character, is really easy to recruit on the other routes, but he has some of the least amount of supports in the game. Sylvain. Oh, Felix is pissed. Hey, Felix. I'm glad you're safe. You irresponsible fool. Protecting me like that? You're so weak and yet you always, always... Look, it doesn't matter. As long as you're safe, you can go on living while I... And he's in the infirmary. Stop kidding around. You're not going to die. I won't let you. <laughs> nah, I won't die on you. I promise. You think something like this could kill me? No way. A little magic will take care of the wound. Some bed rest, then I'm good to go out and do it all over again. Sylvain? Oh, come on. That was funny. It's not like you to be so concerned. Well, that's... Felix has a really hard shell that hides his care in nature. <sighs> you really are a fool. The biggest in all of Fodlin. I thought something was off. There's no way you could die from such a small cut. You're so reckless and inattentive. I thought this might be divine punishment. Hey, that's not nice. You should be thanking me. I am grateful. You've been doing this since we were children. Constantly fooling around, but then showing up and helping when we really need you. I'll admit, seeing that smile on your face, I almost want to give you a hug. Almost. Wow. <laughs> a hug? Did you get hit on the head? Come on. Tell me you want to hug me again. I liked it. That's surprising. S Felix actually showing some care in with his emotions. I won't be repeating it, you halfwit. You're obviously fine, so I'll leave now. You know how we grew up together? <sighs> obviously. Do you remember the promise we made when we were kids? About sticking together until we die together? I remember. Well, I'm really not trying to get myself killed before you. You know that, right? I know. I know. So they're still keeping their promise of uh, trying not to get each other killed. <laughs> but I'm tired of these close calls. You have to stop fooling around. Take your training more seriously. You can die whenever you please, but I'm not going down with you. Okay, I get it. Once I've healed, I'll get my act together. <laughs> then I hope you have a speedy recovery. Sylvain, thank you. That's what friends are for, Felix. Romance for the wind. <laughs> yeah, but that is done, and I'm happy to actually witness that. You know what? Since I was working on, I'll uh, go through Felix. Finish him off. <sighs> now the flowers are all taken care of. Huh? Felix? Why are you hiding there? I'm not hiding. No? Then what are you here for? You don't even have a real reason, do you? No, I don't. Then why? 
because of you. What? What's that <laughs> supposed to mean? I want you to sing for me. I hear your voice when I'm asleep or in battle. It's like... It's like I'm your captive. My captive? What are you saying? Oh my, I'm suddenly really flustered. I can't help it. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying. Forget I said anything. Felix isn't good with emotions. Felix, are you blushing? Oh, it looks like he has a crush. Oh, no, shut up. I'm not blushing. Um. Uh. Well, if you feel like that about it, I suppose I could sing for you sometimes. If you like that sort of thing. Oh? I'd better go. Bye. Hey, wait! You just got here! Do you want to hear me sing or not? Uh, yes. I, I do. Well, what song do you want me to sing? Bears, Swamp Beasties, Foxes, or Dungeon? I like to hear all of them. If you don't mind. Starting with the library song in full. And this part sing for me. Please came full that... circle. Well, okay. Just this once. And of course, they're not going to let us hear any of it. Felix! You, what is it now? Do not fret. I have not come to ask you to chop wood. I have other things to speak of with you. You said that for one to live, they must also be prepared to kill. This again? Yes, that's what I said. You still have a problem with that? No, I do not have a problem with it at all. I simply want you to live too. Oh, okay. Then I'll get back to my training. Excuse me, I am not finished yet. During this time of war, you must wield your sword to ensure your own life. If that is the case, then it follows that we should bring an end to this war. Yep. To end the war, you'd have to kill more people. Perhaps that is true. But once all is said and done, there would no longer be a need to kill, only to live. Is that not so? And I wonder how Felix would react in that case. That's pure fantasy. But if it came to pass, there would be no place for me. What would I do? I was raised to swing a sword. That's all I know. In a world without strife, Warriors like me would be lost souls. Unless you have a hobby and something to live for. It's tragic in a way. We fight to bring peace, and then, if we achieve it, we lose our purpose. I do not think that is anything you should worry yourself over. If the war ends and peace reigns, I shall be sure to have plenty of wood chopping for you to do. <laughs> what a generous offer. And you will never be short on fruits and vegetables to chop for me either. If you felt like you lost your purpose in life, surely you would find a new purpose. It is not like you to be afraid of losing something after all. Hmm. I never thought about it, but maybe there is a path for me in peacetime. I'm intrigued. I might even like to realize this fantasy of yours. Oh, that brings me such joy, Felix. Together, we can make this a reality. I can see it now. A life where you slice vegetables rather than people. Yeah, maybe Felix can become a cook after the war is over. I will greatly enjoy the day when we inhabit a world like that. And that's how it's done. Good to know. There are so many differences between bows and blades. Yes, you're a quick learner, Leone, and quite a good teacher as well. <laughs> Must be Captain Gerald's influence. The weather, the terrain, the enemy's feelings. You have to find ways to make it all work for you. Yep, I agree. A warrior can't stick too closely to predefined tactics. Make a plan, but leave it open enough to change on the fly. That's quite shrewd. You're impressive for a girl. For a girl? Come on, you're past that. Looking down on your opponent is a great way to fall into a pit trap, isn't it? 
I suppose that's true. Glad you remember. Yeah, she actually trapped him. I still him. have much to learn. Not only about swordplay, but also about thinking on my feet. I hope to learn more from you, Liani. Count on it. We'll come up with plenty of new ideas if we work together. Guess that means we're partners, doesn't it? We're what? Partners. Friends who help each other improve. Huh. Partners. That's not bad. Not at all. Looking forward to working with you, partner. Likewise, partner. Yeah, it's amazing how every every character has grown with these supports. Like, it, it makes it all really nice and you want to see them all. So, Felix, is the tea to your liking? It is. And now he's on a date with Dorothea. It's nice to relax like this every now and then, isn't it? It is. You said some of your equipment is damaged, didn't you? It... it is. Awkward, very awkward. Felix doesn't know what to do. Are and the silence. To talk? We could discuss your family or what's happening in high society. Flavors of tea? Your favorite jokes? And there's Dorothea trying to salvage. None of those. I already told you, I don't joke. <sighs> of course, only cynicism. <sighs> oh, I know. We're holding a small opera in the cathedral soon. I'll be singing too. If you're interested in... Uh, but of course you aren't. I think he'll go. You can sing. I'm sorry. What did you just say? Can I sing? I was only a diva of the Middle Frank Opera Company, that's all. <laughs> it's like Felix didn't know. But yeah, Felix likes singing after how he's been treated in that. Oh, right. I forgot. You forgot? Am I that uninteresting to you? It's just he's never heard Dorothea sing properly. <sighs> what must you think of me? You're insincere and loud is what I think. But you do make a good sparring partner. And a good tea companion. Oh. Anyway, when's the concert? It's an opera. And you don't have to come. You just invited me. You can't tell me not to come. That's for me to decide. Yep. Then you must be there. I'll sing my heart out just for you. I haven't said I'll go. Are you going to come or not? If you keep teasing me, I might just pretend to cry. And then there's the acting. Fine, I'll go. Fantastic. I look forward to it. And there we go. So, Ash. Yeah, I still have a lot to go, but at least I'm starting to clear things out a bit more. But yeah, I still think I'm going to have to do another two to three videos just to get through all this. But that's, like I said, that's what happens when you wait to uh, grind your supports and do them all at once instead of spreading them out a bit more. Of course, that's because I got here. I'm like, oh shoot, I didn't do enough grinding and everything. So I'm in the, the last few moments of, get, of the game rushing to get this done so I could get as close to 100% uh, through one playthrough as possible. Okay, so I will end the video here and I will see you next time for more supports. So this is Zach of SomeDudePlays.com, just some dude who likes to play video games. And if you've liked the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share, turn on notifications, visit SomeDudePlays.com. And remember, we are all legends, so have a great day, everyone.